Oh, it's great to see you. I'm John Zadar. This is the weekend of March 24th, and you are watching On Top and Hot, where we like to talk about OTC and penny stocks that have potential to make us some money. Now, they're not the same. An OTC and a penny stock are different. A penny stock is any stock under five bucks ton of them on the OTC. There's also a ton of them on the major exchanges. And today we are looking at a major exchange stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker USAU, US Gold Core. Surprise, it's a mining company. Now, you know how I feel about mining companies. They're over my head. When I read their news, I just don't understand all that technical jargon. So I really don't focus in on them. But there's a lot of them out there right now. And I got a lot of friends that do trade them. And just the other day, I was talking to one. And he brought a few to my attention. And he gave me a lesson in mining. And this is a company I want to share with you. They're doing a lot right now. And they are in developmental stage, not just exploration on one of their projects. So USAU, she finished the day at $4.36 and almost 1% down. So what does this company do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's focus in on that. So the company's got three projects. They are in three different states. Each one is a different type of mining operation, and they're all at different stages. Their most current acquisition is Shalice Gold Project. We don't get a lot of information here. We know it's in Idaho. <laughs> the Shalice Gold Project is located about 60 miles southwest of Salmon, Idaho, if you know where that's at. It is within the Territory Shalice Volcanic Fields, right here in the center. They go on to tell us that the gold is a low sulfidation type of gold. What this is, and this is very interesting. This was explained to me by my friend. I didn't know anything about this. But near the volcanoes, you get a lot of volcanic activity, heat, and it heats up the water and boils it. And that pushes up flecks of gold way from the deep all the way close to the surface. Then it falls back down onto a layer of sand and it accumulates on top of that sand. So it's not very deep and it's pretty thick. So these are nice places to find. And this is what the company has bought. Uh, historically, they're telling us that there is approximately 313,000 ounces of gold there at a ratio of 1.2 grams per every ton of material. And they rank Idaho as eighth by the Fraser Institute. This is higher than the Canadian jurisdiction. Now, jumping over into their presentation, they give us a little bit more information about this project in Idaho. This project remains an exciting prospect with a historical gold resource already discovered. We believe that it has an excellent upside potential and we've been watching with interest the activities of our neighbor, Ophir Gold, on the adjacent property. Our 2023 efforts will focus on permitting a plan of operations and eventual field exploration programs. Stay tuned. So this one they are just getting started with, but it looks like it has a lot of potential. Let's take a look at that next one. Now their second project is pretty impressive. This is in Nevada. This is the Keystone Project. This is Carlin type gold. This is microscopic gold. It's invisible gold. You and I couldn't see it. The only way you actually get it is to use chemical process to bring it all together. And this exploration project is located in Nevada's Cortez Trend, one of the world's most prolific gold mining trends and home to some of North America's largest mines. However, the Keystone Project has been underexplored. Now, U.S. Gold Corps has done something nobody's ever been able to do. They have consolidated all of these mining areas together, 20 square miles, and they're excited about it. Now, it's not that there hasn't been any exploration done here by anybody else. There has. The problem was there was no collaboration. There was a lot of independent operators out there, so nobody was getting the big picture. Well, the company here says that some of those historical drillings did encounter some good gold grades and local thick intercepts of gold. So they have begun their systematic exploration program and they are looking. Now they go on to tell us over here in that presentation that the Keystone Project is our exploration unicorn. The Keystone Project's excellent prospects are indicated by its geology and location. It is truly what we refer to in the gold mining industry as elephant country. The host conditions of some of the largest gold deposits on the planet are in our midst. 
Woohoo! With all of our work at the Keystone Project over the past several years, we believe we are close to a significant discovery. The Keystone Project has the right address, right host rocks, and right geochemistry. We are continuing discussions with interested parties to partner with and jointly move the Keystone Exploration Program forward. So it sounds like they've got a mother load underneath their feet. They just need to start digging. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the last project, which has really got my interest. And the third project the company has is in Wyoming. And this is as close as you get to green mining, as far as I'm concerned. This is an open pit, and basically they're just digging and they're taking the rocks and they're crushing the rocks. And in the rocks is gold, copper, and silver. And then they send those rocks off to be smelted so they can separate it all. You don't have any chemicals, you don't have any stacks, it's just a lot cleaner. And they actually do something with that hole when they're all done with it. They tell us here that the CK Gold Project was reportedly discovered in 1881, high graded and saw limited mining. Now others did jump onto the property through the years. There was some activity there. 2012 was the last time it saw activity until the company got a hold of it in 2014. And then they started their systematic exploration, right? They were drilling in 2017, 18, 2020, 2021. In 2022, they took all that information, brought it together and submitted their SK-1300 technical report, preliminary feasibility study, which is what you need if you want to start digging. They tell us that the CK Gold Project property is located in Silver Crown Mining District of Southeast Wyoming, approximately 20 miles west of the city of Cheyenne. The property comprises about 1,120 acres, about two square miles, and is 100% owned by U.S. Gold Corps. In December 2021, the company released the project's SK-1300. The project offers the company near-term open pit production potential as well as compelling value. Now, I've got some more information I want to share with you, but I think I'm going to let the management do it. This is only a couple minutes long. There is nothing technical here. You won't hear anything about depth or grade or anything like that. This is all the reasons why this is a great opportunity for them and for us. U.S. Gold Corp. is a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ with the symbol USAU. Our flagship asset is the CK Gold Project in the state of Wyoming. With the metal prices where they are, both gold and copper, I took a look at the project and did some due diligence on it. And what I found was that it was a simple project, open pit mine. It really has a lot going for it. The physical attributes of the CK Gold Project are that it outcrops on surface. It has a very low stripping ratio, so we get immediately into material which we can process and create value. Also, from the perspective of its geographic location, it is uh, ideally suited. Wyoming's an amazing state to have an infrastructure development project like the CK Gold Project. We found Wyoming to be very hospitable toward the resource sector. We feel that we can put CK Gold Project into production on a fairly expedited basis. The state has a 5% royalty, and those monies are earmarked for the state of Wyoming K-12 educational school budget. And we have a lot of infrastructure very close by, including a rail spur and a rail line two and a half miles north, so we can potentially ship diesel fuel in, ship concentrate out, and have a lot of future cost savings. The open pit mining allows us to extract the mineral that we're interested in. And the product is a copper and gold concentrate. That concentrate is dried and shipped off to off-site smelters. So one of the main features about the CK Gold project is that we do not employ any hazardous chemicals, we don't have a tailings dam, and we don't have any refinery or smokestack. The copper that we produce is very much in demand for windmills, for solar panels, for electric vehicles. And we really think that this project can have a green mining aspect to it. You're always concerned about the post-mining land use. We're creating a hole in the ground which has a potential to be used in the long-term need for water retention and storage for the city of Cheyenne. Some of the future possibilities we are currently exploring are looking at the non-mineralized material to sell as aggregate 
we think there may well be a market for that waste rock. So that is all very good for the economics. Gold is one of the world's oldest known stores of value. Our CK Gold project and all of our exploration projects are located in the United States, providing gold, copper, valuable minerals, silver, and American jobs in mining-friendly Western states. We feel that we're making a great contribution. So that really excites me about the project. And to be frank with you, I like to see hard assets. I think gold should be part of everybody's portfolio. So as you can see, this is a real clean and simple process of mining. They've got easy access to their materials. They're just digging a hole from the top down. And 10 years later, when they're done digging, they're just not going to leave us an ugly old pit there in the middle of Wyoming. They're going to fill it with water. They're going to give us a pit lake in Cheyenne. And I don't think Wyoming's going to mind that at all. Not to mention, they're going to get 10 years worth of jobs at a clean mining facility. No chemicals, no stacks put in off emissions. Doesn't even look like they're going to have any waste aggregate, all the rock that doesn't have any minerals in it. They believe there's going to be a market for that in construction or road base, things as such. Now, they did tell us that they have 5% of all their revenues earmarked for the school districts of Wyoming. And this is the best thing they got going on right now. Wyoming's backing because Wyoming is in trouble. I found this article. This came out about a year ago. Coal money gone. Hundreds of millions of dollars no longer available for school construction. Wyoming will receive no coal lease bonus money to help fund its schools and their construction needs in the next two years. A loss of hundreds of millions of dollars compared to past budget cycles. And income from other minerals isn't looking good either. Now this entire article is about coal and oil. They don't talk about any of the hard minerals, gold, silver, copper, nothing like that. But you can see they are in trouble and they are looking for ways to use their state land to produce revenues for their school. They tell us here that currently their entire budget is $170 million and they are used to working with an excess of $500 million. So they're in dire straits right now. So they're going to do everything they can to support this company to get going as fast as possible. Now, the one thing they did not cover a whole lot of, which is a very important aspect of this opportunity, is the smelting. They are close enough to smelters to make this opportunity profitable. This has been the problem before. It's very cost prohibitive if you're not close enough to smelters. And I've got a news press here from March 22nd. Now this news press, it is dedicated to the smelting aspect of their business because this has been a problem with most mining operations that do this sort of mining. They can't get all of that material as far as they need to get it and still make any money. In this case, the smelters are very, very close. So they tell us here in the headlines, U.S. Gold Corps anticipates that their copper gold sulfide concentrate from its CK Gold project to be readily marketable. That means very quickly they're going to get it out of the ground and get it to their buyers because it needs very little processing. Now, most of the information here is about the quality of their concentrate. It hasn't got any arsenic. It hasn't got any mercury. So they don't have to do any chemical processing. They are sending all of their material after they crush it, after they sort it, put it onto the trains, sending it to the smelters. And they tell us here that metal extraction that takes place off-site at an established smelter is an indication that they're not using chemicals. Additionally, there will be no emissions at the site associated with smelting and refining. They're just heating the rocks up. They're just melting the metal. So there's no emissions here. This is green, clean processing. They go on to tell us here that their job is to mine the rocks, crush the rocks, and sort it, and then send it to the buyer. And they believe that they are going to be producing 20,000 tons per day on average, with approximately 170 tons per day of concentrate products projected to be generated for sale to North America and abroad. And this concentrate is going to contain approximately 19% copper. And in every ton of material, they believe they will receive 1.5 ounces of gold and 1.7 ounces of silver. Finally, they tell us that the final offtake contracts have yet to be settled, but the project anticipates sales to one of a number of domestic copper smelters, 
which means that transportation of product by road is viable. The nearest facility is the Keencott Utah Smelter in Salt Lake City. This is the most logical destination for the product. Other facilities are located in Arizona and Eastern Canada, so it is possible. Everything is perfect here and looks really good. Now let's go see what their share structure is, relative volume, and all that other good stuff. First thing we're going to take a look at is the relative volume for the company. Looks like she had a severe drop on Friday, March 24th. She's normally doing 33,000 shares a day for the last month. On Friday, she dropped down to 18,000 shares. She's getting further and further under the radar. Share structure. Well, this is good news. No matter how you slice it, we have a legitimate low float. They've only got 8.3 million shares in the outstanding share count. A low float is anything under 10 million, so we are there. Now, out of curiosity, I did go to Google and look it up, but they tell me it's either 6 million, 7 million, or 8 million. It doesn't matter. Anything under 10 million is a legitimate low float. Financials for the company, well, they've got nothing to show us annually and nothing to show us quarterly because the company has been in the exploration stages with all their projects. But now, CK Gold Project has moved into developmental stages. They have projections. Now, I don't have a lot of information here, but I got enough to give you an idea of what's going on. So the company has set prices that they are earning. They're going to get $1,625 for every ounce of gold they produce and $3.25 for every pound of copper. And they estimate over the next 10 years, it's going to cost them $221 million to mine. That sounds pretty cheap to me for 10 years worth of mining. Now they tell us the sort of money they're going to make. And I'm presuming this is on a yearly basis. They really don't say. The project shows a pre-tax NPV of $323 million and an internal return rate of almost 40%. Now, they say if the price of gold and copper go up, they could easily be up to almost $600 million with a 60% internal return rate. So it could get a lot bigger than what we're looking at now. And this is the projection. They are going to start making revenue. How soon? Really don't know. But Wyoming is helping them along. And taking a look at their disclosures. We've got one current 10Q. This is their most recent financial. If you really want to know about the company, dive into that. It's not just about their numbers. It's about their history everything, every deal they've made, when they started, everything. It's all in there. So if you're really interested, dive into the 10Q and read that. It's good practice. We really don't have a whole heck of a lot of news here. This goes back to February of this year. Most of what we see here comes from Seeking Alpha. We do have this shareholder letter that came out at the beginning of February telling us about everything that happened in 2022 and what their plans were for 2023, which we've been talking about. They went to a conference and a convention in February, and then we had their most recent piece of news, which came out on the 22nd, which is the one we've been looking at. So really what we're doing now is monitoring. They are in the developmental stage for the CK Gold project and Wyoming is helping them to get it going. And they've got lots of revenues that are projected. So as I said, they've got a lot of potential. Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's do some charting now for USAU. We're going to do it on Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform I got from TD Ameritrade. So can you. This is a six-month, four-hour view for USAU, U.S. Gold Core. Our low bubble is six months ago at $3.50, and our high happened in January of $5.30. You can see our 200 has already come down and is coming back up, and right now she is leveling out where all of our activity is occurring. She fell from that high bubble of $5.30 down to $3.85, and with a lot of fervor and a lot of volume, she kicked way up here on top of the 200-day SMA, but she has fallen back, but not way down to here, way up here on top of her 9-day SMA just underneath that 200-day SMA. Now, she has had a lot of volume built up here, but it really isn't a lot of volume. Today, that little bar we know was 18,000 shares. This big bar right there, that is 94,000 shares. The big bar on this huge jump, that is 116,000 shares. 
My point, with the low float, you don't need millions of shares to move to get big bounces. You only need tens of thousands, a hundred thousand, and you get bounces like that. Our oscillators, our technicals are docile and flat. For the last three days, she's been going sideways accumulating, and you can see that in our technicals. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she was underneath the 200 here, hit that low, forcibly jumped onto that 50. She wanted to be there. Look at the size of that bar. She bounced in here until she wanted to be on top of the 200, jumped way up here, came back, virtually bounced off of it, and is now going sideways, paying heed to this 50-day SMA. She has had some aftermarket activity. It is green, and it is right up underneath the 50-day SMA. Our technicals are pretty weak. It looks like everything is actually underneath. Yeah, our PPO is underneath the red line. Our MACD is underneath, but they're all pretty flat. The only thing rising right now is our RSI because when the price rises, there's our green rise, your RSI rises. And our five day, five minute view. Woo, she took a huge jump here, got too far from everything. You got to expect it to come back. It's like a rubber band. You stretch too far away from these SMAs, it will come back. And it did, smack, right back to the 200-day SMA, bounced off of that up over the 50-day SMA, lost it again, but put herself back in here. And she's arguing right now. All of our SMAs are kind of screwy, so she's having a hard time finding a place to sit. But we're not looking for this to run tomorrow or the next day. We know it's a developmental stage company. CK Gold Project has lots of revenues they're going to be making, but this is in the future and we don't know how far. But it's not at a bad price. Now think about this. She's not making any revenues right now and she's at over $4. People are watching this company. What do you think is going to happen when they start making revenues and they start pouring in hundreds of millions of dollars? Again, I don't know when this is going to be, but if you've got a little patience, you could really capitalize on this. USAU, she has a ton of potential, folks. She's got gold in the ground. She just needs to get out. But do some more due diligence. It can't hurt you. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Para pa 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 pa